occupational health is the study of the relationship between work and health. There are health hazards involving our working environment, methods, materials and facilities in every occupation. The prevention of these health hazards is vital. Health encompasses the physiological as well as the psychological. Staying physically and mentally healthy enables high efficiency at work and prevents occupational diseases. The following story illustrates the relationship between work and health, and it takes place in a law firm. Come in. Miss Mo, your photocopies are ready. Oh. Oh. on here get up get up everybody get up come over here you're all falling asleep what's wrong with you you Tim you you're sleeping behind there I worked all night hey the day is still young you got hours to go it's Saturday and you just got paid why are you all so tired where's your energy what's wrong with all of you miss Mo my workspace is too small for me to work on all this typing hurts my wrists and my chair is really uncomfortable yeah I'm always sneezing in the office I must be allergic Oh, yeah. As soon as I walk in here, I get tired. All I want to do is go back to sleep. <sighs> uh, uh, Jukes! Well, no wonder. The air is on full blast. Hey, Kitty, the aircon is filled with dust. Get it cleaned. TK said we can't afford it. He said to clean it when we have time, but we're all so busy. Nobody has the time. Oh, yes. TK said because it's getting hotter, we have to keep the aircon on high. TK. Hi there. Why won't you spend money to clean the air conditioner? Don't you know anything about occupational health? Occupational health? The factors in our workplace that can endanger our health come from things that can be physical, chemical, biological, ergonomic and psychological. Look, such as ventilation. If it's not cleaned, it can collect germs. This is a biological hazard. It affects our respiratory system. If we all get sick and everyone's off the firm, we'll lose a lot. It's just not worth it. Ah, oh, Miss Moe is right. Do you know the amount of work you give me makes me worried constantly about work. It gives me headaches, stomach aches, I'm miserable and depressed. You know how much pressure I'm under? Miss Mo, is this a psychological hazard? It is. But you don't have pressures. If you do, you're faking it. Your loss is at the track of the only pressure. Speaking of pressure, Miss Mo's pressure is worse. She worries about our tardiness, our sick days, and if we win or lose our cases. Miss Mo must have anxiety attacks and loss of sleep, which even causes her beauty to suffer. I think you need psychological counseling. Need a friend to talk to? Are you free tonight? No. Oh, let's meet at California. Off, off, off! <laughs> All right, everybody. Speaking of health, if you work really hard and win all your cases this month, I will hire a cleaning person to clean the aircon and buy ergonomic furniture for everyone, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get overexcited. It's probably just talk. All right, all right. Miss Mo, Tim, you two come in. I have a few cases on occupational health. Come on. Hey! Miss Mo, you're familiar with these sorts of cases. Oh, occupational disease compensation. <laughs> but in this particular case, the employee is seeking compensation because he suffered a loss of hearing from working long-term in a noisy environment. The committee has approved it. The claim has been paid. But he is not satisfied with the amount. He wants to appeal for more. These kinds of compensation cases caused by work are very common. A chef suffered from cervical nerve and muscular damage in his shoulder because of prolonged straining of his neck while cooking noodles. He asked for compensation from his employer. Also, a printing press worker applied for compensation because his job involved extensive use of chemical solvents to clean the printing press. He suffered from peripheral nerve damage from prolonged breathing in of the chemicals. Compensation cases of occupational disease are hard to handle. It's all hearsay. Some people's illnesses may not be due to their jobs. You just like to argue. You make a great lawyer. <laughs> Actually, occupational disease cases may be civil suits. Employers and employees should both take responsibility. According to a study, the number of employees with occupational diseases are absolutely staggering. Between August 1997 and August 1998, 900,000 sick days were reported among 3 million employees in Hong Kong. 
That's 2,465 years and nine months. The doctor's fees alone were as much as 513 million Hong Kong dollars. Wow, unbelievable, but what an opportunity. I should have studied medicine. All you ever think about is money and vacation. I guess if we paid more attention to our health in the workplace, we wouldn't have to worry about occupational diseases. You should talk. You have the most disregard for health in the workplace. You give me too much work. Oh, so quit. What have I did? Who would help you then? You see, TK, I'm constantly bombarded by pressure at work. I'm going to have an occupational disease before long. You understand. All right, you two, stop fighting. Go and start work on the case. Don't just sit there. Get going! You see? It's done. Have a look. So soon? Ah, oh, I almost forgot. Put all this new data into the files. You've got to be kidding. I worked all night. I haven't eaten. I haven't slept. I haven't even bathed. I worked really hard on this and now you want more? You had energy just now. I was pretending. Good acting. Continue. Get going with these. Off! <clears throat> You sadistic woman. No wonder you're still single. Ah, 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 ah. Well, doctor, how's my arm? Don't worry. Let me see. Oh. Oh. Nurse, please make the appointment for surgery. Yes. You can't be serious. I need surgery on my arm. Will I be a cripple? Can I move again? Mr. Yu, don't worry. That surgical appointment is for the patient who came before you. He has occupational disease. Oh, thank God you scared me, doctor. You should be scared. Most people think that only manual laborers can have occupational diseases, when in fact occupation diseases can occur in any line of work. Occupational diseases? That can't be. I'm a paralegal in a law firm. I'm not a construction worker. <laughs> Well, most people think the same thing. They don't think that clerical work can be hazardous. For example, prolonged stress can cause problems to the digestive system. Working in high temperatures may cause heat stroke. People whose work requires prolonged exposure to radiation may be at risk of cancer if they're careless at work. Sewage workers are exposed to sewers full of germ-infested rats. If they work carelessly, they may be affected by leptospirosis carried by the rats. I see. Every occupation has risks. Sooner or later, everyone suffers from occupational diseases. That's not necessarily true. If you check your working environment for hazards and take preventative measures against them, you can minimize the chances of having occupational diseases. As for the surgery I just ordered, it's for a patient who is suffering from tenosynovitis, resulting from prolonged typing without rest. Tenosynovitis? Inside our body are soft tissues called tendons that join muscle to bone. The tendons in our hands and wrists in particular are wrapped by a sheath. In between the tendon and the sheath is a layer of fluid that minimizes the friction between the tendon and sheath caused by movement of the hands. Tenosynovitis is caused by the frequent and repetitive movement of the hands or overexertion of hand muscles. This makes the tendon rub against the sheath, which causes it to become inflamed. Data entry operators, cashiers, machine repair workers, housekeepers and wonton wrappers, their hands perform the same repetitive movement, making them prone to tenosynovitis. Workers who have to constantly grip a tool or item, or bend their wrists often, or lift their arms, also risk getting tenosynovitis. Therefore, these workers should pay more attention to occupational health. When they work, they should avoid bending small joints, they should use their larger joints instead. They should also avoid over-twisting or over-bending their wrists, and they should minimize repetition of the same movement, such as prolonged typing and meat chopping. They should also reduce the speed and intensity of their movements, and use well-designed equipment to facilitate their work, as well as taking appropriate rests and exercises. Oh, well, doctor, I have a lot of documents to type. I may have this tenosynovitis. Could you check my arm? Let me see. Yeah. Oh, yes, my boss is crazy. She gives me way too much work. She's a real slave driver. That's what she is. Ah! Whoa! You're hurting me, doctor. Mr. Yu, don't worry. Your arm is just slightly bruised. The x-ray shows nothing serious. Nothing broken. Well, I don't think so. Um, 
I don't think so, Doctor. I really think it's serious. Have you checked it thoroughly? Check I again. Come I on. checked your arm thoroughly. Just apply some ointment and you'll be fine. I may have an occupational disease, Doctor. I may have tenosynovitis. <laughs> well, goodbye. Goodbye. Mm. Come in. Miss Mo, Tim just called the office. He said his arm is in a lot of pain, can't move. The doctor suspects he has tenosynovitis. He wants to have it checked. Hold on. I'll think about it. Oh, listen, Miss Mo is so cold-blooded. Tim just called to get some time off from work. The doctor said he has tenosynovitis and needs to have it checked what? out. What? But she won't let him. James, what do you think? You think Miss Mo is getting back at him? I think it's possible. You know how cruel she can be. If Tim has an occupational disease, that would be terrible. I have a friend whose husband got an occupational disease. He had to retire early. He was only 32 years old. Really? He was a construction worker. He was constantly breathing in silicon dust. In the beginning, he was short of breath a lot. Later, he would gasp even when he was resting. He even developed a terrible cough. Finally, he developed silicosis, which seriously affected his health. That's just awful. I have a friend in the shoe manufacturing industry. He's constantly exposed to the glue in gluing shoes. I hear there is a substance called toluene inside the glue that causes problems to the liver. He also said that ventilation at his workplace isn't very good. He didn't wear a mask, and because of the long-term exposure, his liver was damaged. Oh, no. Well, yeah. this happened to my friend. He developed tenosynovitis. He was in such great pain that he could hardly sleep. The pain woke him. You know, he couldn't oh, even dear. write, you know that? You think Tim will be crippled? I don't know, it's hard to say. But I'll tell you this, he had to switch jobs after his surgery. Oh no, oh, poor man. That's terrible. Apple? Yes? Tell Tim to take a week off. All right. Peter, a shampoo for this lady, please. Timothy, you! Oh, sorry, go ahead. Excuse me, miss. Oh. Miss, would you like a shampoo? Yes. Hold it! Mister? Look, 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 look! He's What's got wrong, a miss? skin disease! You want him to shampoo me? Are you out of your mind? Oh, this is not a skin disease. It's occupational dermatitis. It's not contagious. <laughs> You're kidding, right? I can feel the itch in my head. How can you have him serve your customers? Your head itches because you need a shampoo. Not my problem. I'm sorry, miss. I'm a little short-handed, so I asked him to work. What he has is occupational dermatitis. It's caused by prolonged exposure to chemicals. It's not contagious. He's getting much better. Really, he's getting much better. Are you sure? They're swollen and peeling. I always tell him to use a pH-balanced cleanser to wash his hands after work and use a moisturizer. This is how you can prevent your hands from losing its natural oil from overexposure to acidic or alkali hair products, such as the chemical used to perm hair and hydrogen peroxide used in hair color treatment and also shampoo. But he never listens, so now both his hands are damaged. Now he is under long-term care with a doctor. Hey, Ken, someone throw up in your washroom. It's disgusting. <gasps> uh, Timothy, you! Hey, miss, you haven't paid. You never serve me. Why should I pay? If you don't pay, you have to strip. What do you want? Wait, wait. You have to take off our gown. Of course, I don't want it. It's not a name brand. Hey, are you all better for work now? Apple? Yeah? Bring Tim all the unfinished case files. Okay. Oh, have a little heart, will you? I'm only sitting here because I am a responsible person. The doctor says I should take it easy and not overexert myself right now. Oh, in that case... Just give him two files. I'll finish the rest of them. Okay. So, when will you finish these files? Gotta go slow. 
I can't rush. Hmm, I won't rush you. When you're done, leave them on my desk. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, it's lunchtime. One hour only. Don't be late. It's lunchtime. All right. Hey, Tim, it's lunchtime. Oh, I can't go. Look at all the work I've got piled up. You go ahead. But if it's not too much trouble, bring me back a Fujian fried rice with two eggs for me with veggie stir fry and one iced tea. Oh, that's a tall order. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Whoa! Right. I wouldn't really hit a woman, but Teresa Mo, I'll get you. Come on, Teresa, I'm gonna get you! Right there! Come on! You deserve this! Every bit of it, Teresa! I'm gonna get you, I tell you! I'll get you, Teresa! You're gonna pay! Oh. You sure move fast for a sick man? Your hands are very agile, too. Teresa Mo, what do you want? What do you want? You don't have to say anything now. Your testimony may be used against you in the court of law. Mm. Look, here's the evidence. You are guilty of fraud when you lied to the company about your occupational disease and got a paid holiday. Oh, <laughs> yeah? What a joke. I said from the beginning I suspect I have an occupational disease. You can't prove I didn't suspect I have a problem. All right, all right, Miss Mo. You take your job much too seriously and you work too hard. Tim lied because he was afraid of the amount of work he had to do. Let's forget about it. Because we have been working so hard, we've won quite a few cases recently. Everyone's contribution to the firm's appreciated. We will improve the working environment in the office. Oh yeah, Miss Mo. TK bought new filters and lumber support for us. Oh yes, he also invited a specialist to help us understand job-related illnesses. Wow, TK, you big spender. This is an old classmate and best friend, Michael. He is an occupational hygienist. He will check our office and give us advice about our working environment. Actually, occupational health should be taken seriously because on average, we all spend one third of our time at work. If your working environment is filled with hazards, you run a high risk of suffering occupational diseases. If you don't eliminate or reduce the hazards, when you return to your job after you recover, you will suffer the same disease again. It's a very serious problem indeed. Just take James, for instance. Yeah, yeah. Michael said where I place my documents is way too low. I have to bend my neck, which causes injury to my neck muscles, not to mention pain. He said if I continue to do this, my cervical vertebrae can be injured and inflamed. Wow, you'd better be careful. Mm. He also told me that long hours of work in front of the computer without rest would cause overexertion of the eyes, which causes itchiness, discomfort, and headaches. After a period of work, I should rest for a while. And when you're resting, you can do some eye exercises to relax. That is good occupational health. Oh yes, Michael said your chair is too high. Your feet are constantly dangling, causing pressure in your back and legs. You have to use a foot rest. No wonder. One more thing. Poor quality chairs without sufficient support of the lower back can't keep the spine in proper shape, which causes pain in the back. If this is the case, add a lumbar support. The environment in the office may be causing everyone's low energy level. This air conditioner is filled with dust. You should have it professionally cleaned regularly. Also, you must make sure that there's sufficient fresh air in the office. For example, install a ventilation fan here. The level of carbon dioxide in the room usually indicates the correct level of fresh air. Apart from fresh air, you should pay attention to the temperature, humidity and lighting. Occupational health is a concern for everyone in the workplace. Pay close attention to the use of materials, equipment, working process, and environment to see whether or not they pose threats to your health. These hazards may be physical, chemical, biological, ergonomic, or psychological. If they exist, then you must employ appropriate protective measures so that working will be healthy again. And we can all be more productive. Okay. The bottom line is occupational health is the responsibility of the employer as well as the employee. We have to work together for the best results. You mean we have to keep working together? Yes! What? <laughs>